St. Louis Federal Reserve President James Bullard said Sunday he did not believe the U.S. economy or jobs market was in free fall. Really? It's Sunday, April 5th, 2020. You, you know, when you read statements like this, you have to ask yourself, are they just flat out lying to us or are they this stupid? This is on CNBC today. The Fed, St. Louis District in late March predicted we may see 47 million people lose their jobs right here in the United States of America. That would put us at 32% unemployment. And these are conservative numbers. I would like to ask Mr. Bullard, what does he consider a free fall? The financial dominoes are now falling and millions of Americans are helpless. There's no help coming from the banks. There'll be no help coming from the U.S. government. Millions of people are helpless and they're going to find out very soon, just how helpless they are. When the money runs out, when the unemployment checks run out, um, when they don't get the small business loans, they're going to find out just how helpless they are. Good article today on wolfstreet.com. Trucking sales are skidding right off the road. One of the best bellwethers we have with our economy is trucking. Orders for heavy trucks in March collapsed by 52% from the already dreadfully low levels a year ago to 7,400 trucks, the lowest since 2010. If we had a booming economy, if we had a healthy economy, we would not be seeing numbers like this. And look, we have got to stop blaming this infection uh, for what's happening with this economy and, and this fraudulent stock market. We have a very sick economy, and we have had a very sick economy at least since 2008. Things never got fixed. We kept putting Band-Aids on the gunshot wounds. We kept uh, rates too low for too long, and here we are back at zero, pumping in tons of quantitative easing, tons of helicopter money, tons of repo injections. If things were so good, how come we were doing all of this? How come we were pulling every trick out, out, out of the book here? to keep this economy going. So it's gonna be easy to blame the whole collapse on this infection. Uh, this infection is just merely the pin that pricked one of the bubbles. The plunge in truck orders didn't start a few weeks ago. It started 17 months ago. 17 months ago, we started seeing plunging truck orders. Um, it was last summer, around September, when we started seeing the repo injections because we had a liquidity crisis in our banking system. So we can blame whatever we want to blame, but what we should blame is this ill economy that we've had for a number of years that we ignored, that people didn't want to talk about. We didn't want to talk about the massive debt. We didn't talk about, we didn't want to talk about how we were going to pay down the debt. The debt since 2008 continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger. The stock market became more fraudulent. There was more manipulation, more corporate buybacks. Nobody wanted to talk about that as long as it was going up and people were making money. Well, now reality is here. People are losing massive amounts of money. Trillions of dollars have been vaporized out of the stock market. People are now losing their retirements, their 401ks. And now there's concern. But nobody wanted to talk about what was happening you know, a year ago three years ago or five years ago, people wanted to ignore it as long as it was going up and they didn't care how it was going up. Look, nothing's free. And now America is going to pay the piper for all the criminality that took place uh, in these markets. And ignoring this economy, this consumer-based economy based on debt, and it's all going to come to a head. And a lot of people are going to get hurt. Over the past 12 months, Class 8 orders have dropped 66% from their peak uh, back in 2018. That's a bellwether. That's the real economy. When, when people and companies aren't buying trucks, when freight companies are going out of business left and right, that's a real bellwether to the real economy. Zero Hedge today. Looting wave strikes New York City. Um, again, just the beginning of things to come. 
Stores in New York, San Francisco, Seattle, and Chicago, and even stores right in my area, boarded up. What are they expecting? Well, already in New York, um, burglaries are going through the roof, burglaries in Chicago going through the roof. And as people sit in their houses longer without a paycheck, without a job, we're going to continue to see crime skyrocket. We're going to see stores broken into. Uh, what's most targeted? Restaurants, supermarkets, and retail stores. Food, alcohol, and retail goods are what thieves want. Uh, pretty soon, they're not going to want the Rolex watches. They're not going to want diamonds. They're not going to want Louis Vuitton handbags. They're going to want food. That's what people are going to want because that's going to be the most important asset very soon. What happens the longer that people sit locked up in their homes? No jobs, no money. Again, this is a recipe for disaster. We have uh, opportunity inequality. We have wealth inequality. We have people now uh, being laid off of jobs. Many never going to go back to those jobs. Um, this is a recipe for disaster right here. When we look back just a few months ago, life seemed so much different. How quickly things have changed, quite literally overnight, like the flip of a switch. And here we are dealing with an economic collapse, dealing with this infection, whether it's real, whether it's not. Uh, I believe it is, but I believe that it may be uh, being used for a different agenda like the one we're watching right now where the economy is completely shut down and frozen. People being forced to stay in their homes. Now here in Riverside County, it is now law that you must wear something over your mouth um, when you leave your house. So if you go out to the store, you're at the gas station, it's a thousand dollar fine if you don't have something covering your mouth. So. Uh, we're really seeing uh, government uh, really um, wielding their power now, telling you to stay home, telling you to wear something over your mouth, um, freezing your economy, forcing you not to be able to work, forcing you not to have a paycheck. Really uh, concerning times here. So we had a, a, a different America at the beginning of the year, and here we are now, April 5th, in a different America. And I was talking to uh, my good friend Sid last night and, you know, just talking about, and I've mentioned this many times in past shows where I've seen four, five, six, seven cars parked in the driveway. Uh, I, I saw the, um, the uh, billboard signs off the freeway to remodel your garage so you could rent your garage out for extra money. So people living in garages, family members living in garages. Um, we talked about people working two and three side hustles just to make ends meet. And I talked to my good friend Sid last night, and he told me that the neighboring house uh, across the street from him, that there are now 12 family members living in that house. Let me repeat that. 12 people living in one house, not a big house, uh, but 12 12 family members now forced to live together uh, because of this crisis that is taking place. And we're going to see a lot more of this take place where family members are now going to be coming back home to live with their parents. Parents are going to be living uh, with the kids, uh, cousins living back with other cousins, uh, brothers and sisters moving. I mean, it's, it's a different America. And now people are forced to make huge adjustments in their lifestyles. And just think about that, 12 people living in a house. And there's probably houses out there where 20 people are living together, doing whatever they have to do. Things are changing here in America. We all know someone at this point who's been laid off with this financial crisis. Uh, I have family members who've been laid off. I, I know personal friends who've been laid off. Um, you know, if you haven't lost your job right now, many people are waiting for that, that call or they're waiting for that day when they go into work and uh, they get notified that uh, they've been laid off or they're, they're, they're no longer is a job for them. We know people right now, you know people, I know people who can't pay their rent, who can't pay their mortgage payment, who can't make their auto payment. We know people like that. You know people like that. Think about this. I, I made numerous videos talking about this. Uh, we can go back into 2019. Uh, where over 7 million people had been 90 days delinquent or more 
on their auto payments. Where do you think that number is going to be next month? I mean, in the good times, the booming, so-called booming economy, over 7 million people were delinquent, 90 days delinquent on their auto payments. How many people now are going to be delinquent on their auto payments? Um, I don't know how this is all going to get sorted out. Uh, they're talking about 30% of Americans defaulting on their, on their mortgage payments. I mean, this is absolutely insanity. I don't know how it's going to get straightened out. We don't even know how long this is going to last. We know for sure April is going to be frozen. Uh, we know that for sure. What happens after April? Nobody knows. Are, are we going to see people going back to work? Or, or are we going to see the stores reopen um, in May? I mean, how many weeks can this economy take this? There's so much uncertainty right now, and there is a lot more uncertainty coming. What is certain, though, right now today is we are in the midst of a financial disaster that is going to get a lot worse. So one thing that we're all certain about right now is we have a financial disaster on our hands. Many right now are living in financial uncertainty. Um, and I feel horrible, heartbroken for so many people who, who've lost their jobs, who have fallen behind on the rent, the mortgage payments, who've had their car already repoed. Um, I feel sorry for those people. I really, really do. Um, I, I think right now we just have to make the most of it. If you're at home, don't sit and play video games all day. Don't sit around, smoke weed all day. Get up, get moving, do something. If you can get outside of your house, I don't know what the laws are in your state. Uh, many people ignoring this anyways, but um, you know, I think it's important to just keep moving. You know, just get up. Uh, I feel horrible that I can't get to my gym. Uh, I was really trying to eat well and, and stay on my workout regimen, and my gym's been closed for three weeks now, and so I, I feel bad that I, I can't get out and work out. So um, we may not be able to get to the gym, but we can at least go for a walk, go for a hike, take your dog for a walk, just be active somehow. We're going to have to be creative here. Take a bike ride. Don't watch TV all day. That's one thing. You're going to destroy your brain and you're going to destroy your body doing that. Try to eat a little bit better if, if you can. And I know it's hard to even talk about this because some people are already out of money and some people are, you, you know, aren't eating as well as they want to just because of their finances. But if you can eat a little bit better, do that. If you can you know, get a little more physical activity, do that. If you can cut the TV out, the video games and the weed, do that. Uh, cut out the booze. Uh, right now, we've got to just try to get in good physical, mental, spiritual shape. Uh, prepare the best that you can. Um, again, I know it's hard. Uh, people are running out of money. They're getting tapped. It's hard. But if you can continue topping off preparations, go out and get yourself some more brass this week. If you can get to your gun range and train a little bit, go out to the range and train a little bit. But if you can um, acquire a little bit of brass, I think that's great. If you can um, acquire some more food and water, continue to do that. If you can acquire more metal, I ordered this uh, a few weeks ago, and it's another $20 gold uh, Liberty. Uh, I ordered this a few weeks ago. I got it uh, late uh, last week. Uh, but it, listen, it's going to get harder to buy that stuff. First off, uh, the price is going through the roof. Uh, most of us don't have the money that we had a few weeks ago. Uh, and so it's going to get harder to get. But if you have the ability to obtain more gold or more silver, uh, I highly advise that you do that. Uh, again, I bought this a few weeks ago. I'm glad I did. I don't regret it one bit. Uh, if I have the opportunity to buy more of this, I'm going to. But again, I have to be, I have to be careful also uh, with the money. I've got to have cash put away. Uh, I've got to have metals put away. I've got to have brass put away, food and water, and, and take care of my expenses. So, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to buy as much gold at these prices as I, I was in the past. But um, if it comes down a little bit, if, if, if things kind of uh, calm down a little bit, and you know, we start seeing brass back on the shelves, metal prices cool down a little bit, 
uh, if people are starting to go back to work, um, this is the time to start jumping back in and stockpiling this stuff. Look, the worst is yet to come. Uh, there may be a lull in the storm here. Take advantage of that lull because I can promise you this is not going to go away. This economy and these markets are going to collapse without a doubt. But we may, you know, we may see dips up and down. And if things come back up, the market could uh, surge, you know, back up a few thousand points. Uh, uh, the infection dies down. They're letting people out of the houses. They're letting people back in the stores. They're opening. People are going back to work. Great. This is when you want to buy the brass. This is when you want to get in and start buying metals because this isn't going to go away. Uh, no matter what the stock market does, this economy is already broken. Um, and many people are not going to be going back to work. So take advantage of the calm in the storm, take advantage of the sales um, because they're not going to last. And I think many of us learned a huge lesson that um, these people who didn't have security, didn't have brass, uh, all it took was a couple bad weeks uh, and look at where we're at. You can't obtain any of this. You, it's so hard to get gold, silver, brass, uh, firearms. You can't get it. And um, we have a real bad habit here in America that, you know, once we have a couple good weeks, we forget about all the bad weeks. We forget uh, about what's happening in the real economy. We, we, we forget what just happened. And, and so take advantage. If we get a surge in the markets, um, if people start going back to work and life seems like it's going back to normal, it's not. It's going to be short lived. Make sure you take advantage of this opportunity. Get back in buy metal, buy brass, buy firearms, buy more food, buy more water, and put it away while you can. People continue to ask me um, where I buy uh, SD Bullion. I have a link down below. They've been fantastic. Uh, and, and even with all this calamity, they got my uh, orders out pretty quick. And they had uh, at least some availability. Uh, you know, people, you, you know, cry about the, the, um, the uh, premiums. Well, you know what? If you would have bought it six months ago or a year ago or a few months ago, you wouldn't be crying right now. So again, that's why if things die down, prices come down, then you don't have anything to cry about. You need to buy. Um, but again, SD Bullion, link down below. I don't care where you get it. Uh, also, uh, there were some good sales on silver and availability on silver, uh, on rounds and junk silver at my local pawn shop. They were, t they were charging 20% over spot. So that was a really good deal. Uh, mainly because they had it and 20% over spot was a really good deal. So that's another place you can look for is at your pawn shop or whoever you deal with online or your local coin dealer, whoever. I don't care where you get it at. I just believe that with what we're seeing taking place and what we know what is coming, you better have hard tangible assets like gold and silver. So I want to leave you with this today. The system that we live in today is broken. The Fed measures have been absolutely 100% inefficient. Now we have small business having to take loans from the US government. This is almost like a loan shark or extortion where the government is going to be in your business, in your quite literally in your business, in your small business. They're going to know all of your data. They had no problems bailing out the hedge funds, but they offered small business loans. And what's interesting is these banks are borrowing money at zero to 1% interest, right? Zero percent, one percent. And they're going to be charging small business 5%. Pure loan sharking, uh, pure extortion. And now the government is going to be in your small business knowing everything you do, knowing all of your data. While they're borrowing money at nearly zero percent, and charging you 5%. Isn't it interesting how the credit cards, you know, the credit card companies and these banks borrow money for literally zero, and then they charge you 21% on your credit card? I'm going to leave it there today. Have a wonderful uh, Sunday evening. Have a good week. Um, my heart goes out to everybody suffering. And look, we're all affected by this. I'm affected by this. You're affected by this. There's nobody that is not going to be affected by this, period. It is affecting everybody. 
but it's affecting uh, millions of people more than it is me, probably more than it is you, because we prepared uh, for quite some time knowing that this was coming. And, and that doesn't mean that it's not a, you know, I was right, you were wrong, you were right, I was wrong. It, it, it has nothing to do with that. Um, I tried to warn people, you tried to warn people. Look, many of you, hundreds of you have written to me saying you've warned family members, friends, got, you got laughed at. People think you're nuts. Now they don't think you're nuts. You, you know, and we talked about this a long time ago. What happens when these same people knock at your door when they lost their house, um, when they have no food? What, do, what are you going to do? I guess that's a, a totally different show for another day, but it's something we got to think about. I, I, I talked about that probably eight, nine months ago. What happens when these people show up on your doorstep with nothing, no food, while you prepared? Uh, these are questions that are going to have to be addressed at some time because reality is here. But that doesn't mean that I don't care about these people. Even though they didn't listen, even though they judged me, they judged you, they made fun of us, um, they're not laughing now. And, uh, but that doesn't mean that we're not all in the same boat. We're going to feel these effects also. Maybe not to the extent that the people that didn't prepare, they're going to feel the effects uh, much deeper than we do. But Look, they're still Americans. They're still our family members, our friends, our associates, um, and we care. And it's going to really be a stressful time in America, and we're going to see people lose everything. As I've said in the past, people that you know, that I know, we're going to see them go homeless. And it's not about who was right or who was wrong. We still have uh, compassion for people. We still care about our fellow Americans, even though we got judged and laughed at. We still need to try and help people the best that we can. We still need to try to wake people up. Uh, we still need to be examples for people. But again, we still need to try to help people. At the end of the day, though, we are responsible for ourselves and our own families. Uh, you know, just like back in the days of Noah, when he got judged and laughed at and ridiculed and made fun of for building an ark that took, uh, I think, about 100 years. When the rain started coming down, the laughter stopped. And when the door closed, it was game over. And you were either prepared or you weren't. Either you were in the ark or you weren't. And if you weren't in the ark, well, you know what happened to those people. Um, look, many people are going to pay a severe price because they ignored the warning signs. Uh, and, and I still have compassion for those people, and I, and I do feel bad. But at the end of the day, I have to look out for myself and my loved ones. You have to look out for yourself and your loved ones. That door of the ark is closing, and we're not going to be able to help everybody. God bless every one of you. Thanks for watching. Please share this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon.